All right, so what is up, guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a weather animated view. So if you have a weather app, this could actually look really good in the background as a special effect. But just to demonstrate it, let's go ahead and click on this button. So the first one to show is this snow particle generator. As you can see, there's nice snowflakes that get generated from the top and kind of fade out towards 80%. And then there's also one for the rain. So in case it's raining and you can control these particles with the speed and the amount and the direction. So there's a lot you can do with this, but I'm gonna show you just how to make the basic implementation so you can customize it later. And then of course, there's also the clear version, but that doesn't really do anything besides make sure that the weather is clear. But let's get started immediately by going to our Gradle scripts and opening our projects build.gradle file. And we're going to be using this dependency from Matteo Batilana, and I will leave the link in the description down below. So just go to that and zoom down. And the first one you want to copy is from the setup section. So go to the repositories and copy the Maven URL. Copy that and place it under the repositories in your project build.gradle. Then go to your regular build.gradle so we can add view binding and the dependency. But just to make sure we get Firefox out of the way, go down and find the implementation and copy that. It should be 3.0.0 and paste it down here. Then right under Kotlin options, we can go ahead and type in build features. And inside here, we're gonna activate view binding by calling view binding and setting it to true. Now we can go ahead and click on sync now. And as soon as it has finished syncing, we can go to our res file and open our layout and our activity underscore main XML. Then we go to split view and we change the constraint layout to a relative layout. We also want to change the background color. So we'll type in background and we will just insert a hash 32, 32, 32, which should be this very dark gray. And the next thing we want to insert is the weather view from the GitHub dependency we've just inserted and we will insert match parent for both of them. And we also have to give it an ID. So at plus ID and WV underscore weather underscore view. And we can close that. Then in our text view, we can remove the constraints and just center that in the parent and set that to true. We will set the text to weather, give it a margin of 20 dp, change the text color to color white, the text size, will be around 30 SP, but this will vary from your own screen size, of course. And finally, we need to give it an ID of TV underscore weather. And right under, we'll create a button which will wrap content. We should give this button an ID, which will be button underscore change weather. We'll create a layout below, which will be under the TV weather. We should center it in parent and click true. Give it a margin of 20 DP and a text of change weather. And that's all we have to do in our activity underscore main XML. So now we can go to our main activity and start off with creating a few variables. So the first one we want to create is a late init var of binding, which will automatically generate this activity main binding for you. Then we need to create another late init var of weather, which is going to be of type precip type. Then we need to create a late init var of weather text, which is going to be of type string. And finally, a private var of number which will be initialized with the value of zero. Then as always inside here, we need to call binding and we need to initialize it with activity main binding dot inflate, call our layout inflator. And then we need to set the content view to binding dot root. Below that, we need to call app compat delegate dot set default night mode and then app compat delegate again and mode night no to make sure it stays on light mode. Then we want to call our button by typing in binding dot button change weather and set an on click listener. And inside here, we will create a method called change weather, which we will create immediately down below. So we'll type in private function change weather. And the first thing we want to type in here is var weather speed, which will equal zero and var weather particles. So you can change this later and set that to zero. Now, if the number is less than two, we will want to increment the number. Else, we will make sure the number gets set to zero. And this will be used to cycle through the three weather cycles. And we can actually simplify this by typing plus plus number, else number equals zero. So we'll just do that. And when the number is zero, we want to create a block and the weather will be precip type dot clear and the weather text will be set to clear. Then when the number is one, 
we will have the weather set to precip type dot snow weather text will equal snow we will set the weather particles to 10 f and i actually forgot to include the f up here to weather particles so it will be recognized as a float then we'll type in weather speed and that will be set to 200. And finally, we need to take care of what happens when it's at two. So create one more block. And we're just gonna go ahead and copy this part right here and then edit it. So we're gonna change this to rain. The text is going to be rain. It's gonna have a lot more particles because it will be moving a lot faster. So we'll set that to 60 and we will set the speed to 600. So it's three times faster than the snow. And right below, we're gonna go ahead and call our text view. So binding.tv weather text and we are going to set the text to the weather text then let's call our binding dot weather view and we want to create an apply block and the first thing we want to set inside here is the weather data and the weather data is going to correspond to this precipitation type which can either be clear snow rain or custom so just go ahead and insert the weather here then we can pick the weather speed just by typing in speed and that's going to be corresponding to our weather speed, then we should call the emission rate, which is going to be the amount of particles that will fall from the sky. And you can put any number you want in here. I just put these for the example of the video. So weather particles, we can also provide an angle, which for this example, just to change things up a bit, we'll set at 45 and a fade out percent, which can be between the values of zero and 1.0. So for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and put 0.85F. So it should cover about 85% of the screen. And with that, we can go ahead and run the program. Perfect, now let's go ahead and test it by clicking on the change weather button. So as you can see, the first thing we notice is the snow falling at a 45 degree angle. And it actually looks quite good. So I'm impressed with the effect. And if we change it to rain, You'll notice now that the rain is falling from the side at a 45 degree angle. And when we click it one more time, it will go to clear and you'll see that nothing will happen. But let's go ahead and increase the particles of rain to 100 and change the speed to 800. Then let's go and change the weather particles for snow to 100 for the weather speed and to 5 for the particle rate. And let's click on rerun. Now, if we change the weather to snow, you should see it is a lot slower and a lot less snow that's falling. So you can actually customize this in many different ways and it should work pretty nicely if you have a weather app that needs some sort of animation. And if we click on weather, it will look like a storm more or less because it's moving so fast. And yeah, that's all I really wanted to go over in this tutorial. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.